Yeah. We are going to uh, California. We're going to Chad next. Yes, my birthplace. <laughs> uh, Riverside represent. Yes. Uh, Shante, yeah, no, this is awesome. Wow, it's pretty cool just to uh, see all this come full circle. I grew up in northern Los Angeles and uh, actually with Alicia Johnson and Allison Felix. Um, oh, my God. So, wow, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, and one thing that's, uh, you know, resonates, and, you know, reading a couple articles that uh, you were a part of and with your diagnosis, you know, you had mentioned your first thought was there's no way I'm leaving my kids without a mother. And then your second thought is there's no way I'm leaving my kids without a mother. It's pretty cool. And I know Alicia, she was part of, you know, this whole motherhood movement, the flower yeah. power. Can you speak to that a little bit? And just, you know, I know we've had your know, Brandy Chastain on here and she had mentioned, you know, in that time frame women would yeah. hide pregnancies to get through it. Yeah. And now it's like something that is being exhibited. Can you, can you talk about that? Cause I think it's very powerful. Yeah. Um, I think I was probably one of the first, so my daughter is 14 now. And so I think I was probably one of the first women in that movement to actually have a pregnancy in return because the expectation is number one, you don't have the baby, which, you know, Sonia Richards Ross talked about in her book or number two, you have the baby and don't come back. And I felt like it was a defiance where it was like, first of all, I'm having a baby. Our bodies were made to do this. I'm not injured. I can come back. <laughs> and just having an amazing support group around me that was able to come by my side. And, you know, I nursed for a whole year. Um, so my husband would bring the baby to practice. I would have to shower in between sets. I would nurse the baby and then give the baby back to him and I would train. And it was hard, probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, but I made it through. Moms are resilient, we're strong, we're able to do that. Um, for me, I was also a Nike athlete. So I grew in that process. My experience was a little bit different where I felt that it was okay I had a little bit of a boldness to have those tough conversations with them. And I faced them head on and, and telling them exactly what it was that I needed. And I think that comes from number one, knowing what I needed and number two, going so long in my life without having it. And I think that, you know, before I was a mom, I was afraid to speak up for what I needed. I knew what it was, but I was afraid to speak. Once I became a mom, there was too much on the line. It was like, look, I need to get back to the Olympics. I need to train. And in order to do so, I need to make sure that my, I'm not losing my house. I need to make sure that I could feed myself so I could feed my baby. And they respected that and they responded to that. So I've had three kids under that, under Nike, as, as a Nike athlete. I've been with them since 2005 and I, I was never dropped. Um, I respect what Alicia went through and I respect what Allison went through and I think that that's why it's so important to learn how to use your voice and, and say what you want and say what you need. And, and um, I was so proud of them for taking those bold and terrifying steps to advocate for mothers. And the industry has changed because of what they did. And so I think it's beautiful that, um, that they were able to be part of that. And even though my experience was different, I think it's because I'm a little bit more bullheaded, <laughs> like, no. This is what I need. And if it's not going to be you, it's somebody else. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for your question. Hug Thanks, 